When your state legislature is flooded with bills, how do you discern which ones are worthy of your support? Eric Tietzel is president of Family Policy Alliance of Kansas. Hi, Eric. Hey, Stuart. You recently had a bill go through your state legislature that was a tough one to weigh. Tell me about it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Kansas has been dealing with a lot of issues related to education. And we had this massive education bill that was built on the backs of pretty big tax increases. It included a lot of favors for some uh, constituent groups that we're not necessarily always right in line with. Um, but it also included a expansion of a school choice program that currently exists uh, that we liked. So you kind of struggle a little bit going back and forth about the, the benefit of this expanded school choice program worth supporting the broader bill. And I've been around this long enough to know how this plays out. The media hypes up the part of the bill that often folks on our side, pro-family, pro-life, they hear it, they think, well, that sounds pretty good. And then you might end up with on the phone with someone saying, why aren't you supporting this bill? What's wrong with you? This is good for families. How do you work your way through that? How do you weigh the aspects of a bill, especially when there are so many in front of you? How do you go through that process? Yeah, it can be really tricky. You know, um, these processes are complicated and the bills tend to include a lot of stuff uh, to try to work through. Obviously, different people have competing priorities and that process of discernment and using your prudential judgment to try to weigh cost versus benefits is going to look a little bit different for everyone based on their uh, most uh, most important priorities. For us, in this case, we eventually decided to just sort of be neutral on the bill. Um, at one point in time, the school choice piece, actually something that included an expansion, but it came at a cost. The state wanted to send in government auditors every year to see uh, if uh, schools that were receiving scholarship funds in a school choice program were up to par. And we weren't willing to take on an expanded school choice program if it meant more government intervention in that private school or charter school process. But they took those pieces out and, uh, and instead um, brought in some uh, requirements related to accreditation that we were okay with. Um, but it was part of a massive package that just included too much for us to be willing to say we'll support the whole the whole thing uh, for this small piece. So we just decided to say we're not going to take a position. So in our hearts, I mean, we all wish that bills were black and white, that there was this one that's 100 percent everything we're looking for. Right. And this one clearly is not anything that we would ever support. But in real life, it's always a mixed bag. I mean, you've got some of this and some of that. How good does a bill have to be before, and, and you know, how many problems can it have before you feel comfortable going ahead and supporting it? That's got to be tough. Yeah, wouldn't it be great if there was just a simple slide rule that you could have uh, or some scales and say, well, it's nine good and one bad, so we're going to be for it, but anything less than seven and three or against, unfortunately, that's not how it works. And so it really does require uh, a lot of prayer, uh, lots of discussion with your friends. We're lucky in Kansas to have wonderful allies in the fight for life and for family and for religious freedom, like Kansans for Life, um, the uh, the local conference of Catholic bishops, um, uh, and other groups. And so we can kind of bounce ideas off of them and see where they're at and what their wisdom says on an issue and uh, our own decision-making process. But at the end of the day, we exist to uh, defend the dignity of every human life, to ensure that families are given the opportunity to flourish and that religious freedom thrives for everybody. And um, if a bill is going to go counter to any of those things, it's highly likely we're not going to support it. The trick is, is, can you support something that moves you incrementally enough given the costs? And uh, it's just a question of discernment in each case. And, and that process is an important part of our work here at Family Policy Alliance. I mean, that uh, to offer reliable analysis, honest analysis of what we're seeing in front of us. Yeah, that's right. And um, FPA is involved in issues all across the country in states and nationally. And sometimes they get really, really tricky. And uh, I know I'm, I'm personally grateful to have a team at, at FPA that, uh, that I can rely on. My fellow state directors in over 40 states across the country, many of whom have dealt with very similar issues in the past, that can be a helpful backstop to and, and a source of wisdom. Um, being part of a team, being part of a community that's all trying to move in the right direction is 
is crucial. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't say we value input from our supporters, our ministry partners. Um, sometimes actually going to someone who's outside of the small bubble of the political process can give you a refreshing glimpse into what's really happening.